Our opening presentation will be done by Jason Smith. He's a member of the Salish and Kootenai tribes. He's appointed to the Governor's Office of Indian Affairs. We're very honored to have him here this morning. I'd like to introduce Mr. Jason Smith. Thank you, Jesse. And I'd like to thank uh, Sacred Roots Language Society for putting this, uh, this event on. I think um, I want to introduce Paige Cohn, who uh, was an intern for Commerce and who's been working on the project uh, with us. So Paige, if you want to wave. And I see there's a, actually some people here that access some of those funds, uh, like Mike and um, Cheney Bell. So they'll probably maybe expand into more of the details. Uh, I think what, one thing you should realize is when we first started this issue, this wasn't, everybody knows that language is probably our most needed and deep uh, thing that we have to, we have to save. Uh, my grandpa always, he knew the Kootenai language and he always spoke about if you lose your language, you'll be, you know, living up in the hills. And that's where you'll end up being. So, so it's really nice to have people out there trying to preserve this and perpetuate it. I mean, it's, 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 it's got to be a, a concerted effort on all our parts. So I'm also a and Sioux from the Fort Peck Reservation, but I grew up on, uh, in, in Elmo, and my father's from the Fort Peck area. When I first started, got, I guess, this journey, I started um, from the Fort, I don't know, the Salish and Kootenai tribe. I worked for the chairman. And then I'm a graduate from Salish and Kootenai College. And then I went to Helena for a few years, and I just never left <coughs> Helena. It's been a pretty long journey, but I, I must say that there's a lot of different ways you can really impact um, Native lives in a lot of different areas. And I, I happen to choose this path, which I never would have realized or thought that some of the things that I s have seen even in Helena, it has been accomplished. Um, I do a lot of uh, spiritual stuff with my family back home, and I thought, well, when I go home, I, I go back to that, but it's, it's followed me all the way to Helena, and I've seen some really, really cool things in it from people who do a lot of good work, and I think this is one of them. I really do. We were successful. Governor Bullock has been really supportive of, of giving money, uh, at least working to attain funding to preserve our languages. In 2011, we had a conversation about, about it. So it was a state senator, um, what's his name? Jonathan Windyboy talked to, us, talked to us about it and said, can I meet with you, Governor? I want to meet with you on this. We, we need to get some money for our languages. He was like, sure, sure. He, that next day, we, we set up the meeting, and <laughs> the governor walks in, and there was tribal leaders. There were just people who spoke the language. There was probably about 30 natives in the governor's reception room. And I thought, wow, he really didn't even tell us that was going to happen. It's like. Uh-oh, okay, this is, this is great. That's kind of like Jonathan style, but that's when I really think that touched the governor's heart that he knew that it was important, um, that this, this initiative was going to be very important to not only our people, but for the state of Montana. So we took on that initiative, and we worked with all the Indian caucus members who've been trying to do this before, and we were successful in the first legislative session, which was four years ago, to secure $2 million. And I believe, I believe that's probably the, we're the only state that ever have ever done that. Um, Governor Bullock really said, okay, let's, let's do it. It was a, and it was a bipartisan support. <coughs> what I mean by bar, bipartisan, it was a, Republicans had to come over and support it. And there was just a few of them that supported it. And I thought, oh, this is great. So the, the tribes each were allocated, I think it was like 200 and some thousand apiece to really come up with some projects and, and show us how they're going to spend the money. Because when we go back to the legislature, 
we have to really meet with the committees, show them what we're, what the tribes are producing, and and, and they they really want to know how to, how they spend the money. And my hats off to Department of Commerce didn't take any money whatsoever. They gave as much as it to the tribes so that they could utilize as much as they possibly can. And with that being <coughs> said, there was some good stuff um, that came out of it. I know that one of the conditions was <coughs> that all the information or things that were produced with this money had to be shared with the historical society. And within our conversations <coughs> with some of the tribes, we had to do it really fast. We had to reach out within the legislative session and ask for input to develop the bill while we're doing the legislative session. And if you've ever been there, it's, it's really fast and furious. There's a, was there 150 legislators that we, we deal with. And so we went from four months getting that through, then we had to make some administrative rules. I don't know, this probably sounds really garbage, but it, it was a long process. And we all had to do it in a, like a, a two weeks, two weeks, and it was very difficult. Um, but they wanted to make sure that we dealt with the historical society. So one of the issues that we had to face was some of the tribes were like, well, this is important to us. We don't want to be sharing this with the public. There was nothing we can do about that. We said, well, if there's things that you can't share or don't want to, then don't, don't produce it because we, by law, we have to, you know, give it to the historical society. But it all worked out in the end. I mean, everybody thought it was worth it enough, and they said, well, the things that we can't share, we'll, we won't share. Um, so in the past session, I didn't think that we would, I honestly thought it was going to be a difficult time to get another, some more money for the languages. So we end up securing $1.5 million. So over the past four years, we've secured $3.5 million given to tribes in terms of preserving our language. And it gets within the, the bill itself, we had to draw out how we were going to do everything. So this time, we learned from all our mistakes that we learned from the previous two years, we started changing things up to make it easier for reporting, um, for producing materials. And I think we've learned a lot, and I think everybody who are on the other end learned a lot. <coughs> but once again, <coughs> I thought it was going to be very difficult when we started having uh, people come up and advocate for the language program. But you know what? It, in the end, we have Republicans getting up and saying, well, this is a good thing. All the Democrats uh, were are, are very supportive of it, so I wasn't so worried about that. It was who we were going to get from the other side to really support us, and it really shocked me. I, I must say, I, so I see this, this work. I think really works in mysterious ways. I mean, this is this was meant to be, and I, I do want you to realize that you know the governor. He he may not fully understand the impact of this, but what he does understand is it's important to us, and he was the first one to really support this kind of initiative. And the Indian legislators, they, they go through a lot. They go through a lot, and I, and I want you to realize that they, they put their name out there, they put their neck on the <laughs> line, and they really advocate and, you know, to have these kind of initiatives pass, and it's not easy, and the Tribal leaders, when they come in and they support these kind of initiatives in the state, it, it makes the difference. It really does. It makes the difference. Um, and I want to kind of save some time. So, where am I at? <coughs> How many minutes do I have? So, I'm just going to end there. And maybe if you have questions, either I can answer them or Paige can answer them because she's going to know more of the details or even some of the people who are working on these projects. So is there any questions or comments? Great. Any questions? <laughs> um, I guess your counterparts in other states, there are similar positions like in North Dakota, right? Um, there's 
or because not every state has a JSON that they lay it off in Native Americans. But what I guess talking with your counterparts, have they gained traction in other states of trying to actually do language preservation or anything like this in other states? Have they thought about bills? So we, there are so many states that have a similar position, and I was talking to Paige about this. We all met a couple months ago, or a couple weeks ago, there was like 11 states that came together, but there's like 22 states that have a similar position of, of mine. And I always tell people that they should really start looking at those people in those positions because if you wanna push legislation like that, you really need the governor's support, otherwise it's gonna be a lot more difficult. But they were, no, I, they were surprised we did it, but I haven't heard if they were gonna start pushing their own legislation. Everybody's pretty different. Uh, I think we're closer to like the Dakotas. They, they do a lot of similar things that we do um, with their legislation, but that's a good question. I don't think so. Federally, uh, Senator Tester is now pushing legislation to support tribal languages. So I think that what we've done in Montana is starting to really get traction, and I think you'll see more people pushing for these kind of efforts, and I hope so. I mean, it should be, so. So if we go in the next session, it's gonna be advocating for the same thing, and that's where you guys will probably need you guys to come in and advocate for, for this. But more importantly, thank you for the work that you do because you guys help this, help this make it work. I mean, it's, it's really, you guys, like Cheney and, and Mike, you guys are really doing some important work. Not so much us, well, we can just help so much, but you guys are the really ones doing it, so. Thank you.